And joining me now is retired U.S. Army General and MSNBC military analyst Barry McCaffrey. General, your reaction to the news? Well, good news for uh, the poor beleaguered Ukrainians who suffered massive casualties trying to protect themselves against this criminal invasion by the Russians, now reinforced by 20,000, perhaps, North Korean soldiers. Uh, I think it's too late to do much, uh, much effective good, but it's something. General, I'm curious, though. <sighs> There was reasoning to not allow U.S. military-made weapons, right? U.S.-made weapons to join this at the beginning of the war, to join, the, join this assault. Um, there was concern about retribution for the United States. So how much does this complicate things using now these U.S.-made long-range missiles? Does it drag the United States into this war further? I don't think so at all. Look, the Russians have taken, we think, more than 700,000 killed and wounded. Hmm. Uh, their economy is partially in shambles. They're isolated in the face of the earth. Their only allies are North Korea, China, to an extent, and Iran. Uh, I think we should have gotten much more muscular in support of the Ukrainians uh, a long time ago. Uh, so we'll see how this plays out. But, of course, the X factor is President-elect Trump, uh, J.D. Vance, uh, and their their announced uh, uh, intent to essentially hand over the war uh, to Putin. That's the problem. So do you believe then on the heels of that uh, and what could transpire between now and January 20th and the inauguration, do you believe this helps bring about the end of the war or does it merely uh, exacerbate this? Hold that thought, sir. We're going to listen to President Biden in Manaus, Brazil. General, I, I know we were talking about the breaking news and the long range missiles now, the United States made missiles going into uh, being authorized for use by, by Ukraine going into Russia now. But I wanted to ask you about another story that was quite remarkable and also an NBC News exclusive. This one about the Trump transition team that is compiling a list of military officers involved in the withdrawal from Afghanistan, possibly for courts martial. Does this plan sound plausible? Does it sound even viable to you? How easy would it be for someone to implement this? Well, I think legally it's it's impossible to imagine anything like this happening. Uh, re retired military officers could be brought back in active duty for some uh, criminal offense committed while they were in uniform. But uh, you know, the bottom line to the withdrawal from Afghanistan is Mr. Trump ran for office saying he wanted out of Afghanistan. He drew down the troop presence to 2,500 troops. Unsustainable, great danger. Uh, the Afghans immediately said these guys are gone. When President Biden was elected, he then ended the presence with the predictable outcome that the thing came apart. Uh, but that withdrawal, I might add, was brilliant. A hundred thousand Afghans ran for the exit and got out of there. There were seven uh, elite battalions on the ground, Army uh, Rangers, uh, Marine uh, Infantry. Uh, we got out of there by the skin of our teeth. So it was a legitimate presidential decision by Trump that brought the end of the, of the, uh, the campaigns in, in Afghanistan. So blaming it on the chairman of the JCS, who has no command authority at all, nor do the service chiefs. That's the commander in chief and the secretary of defense. Those are Trump and his secretary of defense. All right, General McCaffrey, I want to thank you for ironing that out for us. I appreciate your time on all this. And again, thank you so much, sir, for waiting through President Biden's speech there uh, in Manaus, Brazil.